the Phantom 4 is an easy to use flying camera powered by the world's most advanced artificial intelligence technology. Now all you have to do is direct it where to go. Here, let's take a closer look. Look at this thing. It's a total redesign. Polished shell, vented composite core underbelly engineered for strength and weight, sleek, refined, elegant. But there's tremendous strength and elegance. Look, a reinforced gimbal for greater stability. And the motors, refined for increased flight efficiency. Raised so you can go faster without propellers poking into footage where they don't belong. That's gonna come in handy when you're going fast. How fast? That fast. We've added a new sport mode for more experienced pilots to get eye-popping shots, or maybe just to bring out your inner speed demon. Philosopher Immanuel Kant said, all of our knowledge begins with the senses. For the Phantom 4, it's the same exact thing. We've added four sensors, like eyes, in front and underneath, that do sonar detection and point cloud stereoscopic recognition. Look, it can see everything in front of it from nearly 50 feet away, and over 30 feet underneath it. Obstacles like trees, rocks, bison. It hits the brakes, full stop. Check this out. It exists in a world beyond your world. We only fantasize, he does. He lives a life where nothing is beyond him. Nothing is beyond him. What are you going to do with it? Kyle Bellman is a pro at flying a drone. He runs Cyclone Hobbies on Carl Road, and selling drones is now about 75% of his business. We get everyone from real estate agents to roofers to farmers to mulching companies to anyone that has you know a big plot of land that's generally difficult to see from the ground prison guards found a package of drugs inside the mansfield correctional institution after a fight broke out in the recreation yard security video showed a drone dropping it bellman says flying a package with a drone into a prison yard is harder than you think he says it takes practice they don't fly themselves uh and there's video you look on youtube i mean number one drone fail videos and it's it is countless amounts of drones smacking into a, a, a high rise but this incident shows how drones are capable of doing more and more you'd have to be pretty savvy and know a lot about the scenario to pull something like that off dropping drugs into a prison yard is clearly illegal but some of the rules for flying drones are still up in the air for now, the FAA says you can only fly it as long as you can still see it. You really have to be bothering somebody. You have to be, it's the same thing like speeding through a neighborhood. You know you're not supposed to be doing it. All right, welcome back to The Lead. I'm John Berman in for Jake today. Forget tunnels or concealed packages. All the rage in prison smuggling these days, drones. It's the first bust of its kind in Maryland. Two men were arrested for allegedly planning to drop off the delivery of a handgun, drugs, and porn using an unmanned drone, though this plot never got off the ground, I suppose, literally. It's just another new way criminals are using these aircrafts for illegal activities. Let's get right to CNN's aviation and government regulation correspondent, Renee Marsh. Renee, 
How often is this happening? Well, John, it's happening enough to make police very uneasy. Growing concerns tonight about illegal cargo being delivered by drones. The flying technology sold in malls for just a couple hundred dollars is emerging as a new tool for criminals. And tonight, law enforcement is struggling to figure out just how to make an interception. The plot delivered these packages of synthetic marijuana, tobacco, handgun, and pornography to this Maryland prison via drone. This is the first case in Maryland where a drone is suspected in a contraband delivery plot. You can't make this stuff up. But police foiled the plot before it even got off the ground. It was a first in Maryland, but not the first time criminals have used the flying technology to make illegal deliveries. In Ohio last month, a drone dropped off 64 grams of marijuana and 6.6 grams of heroin in the prison yard at the Mansfield Correctional Institution. In South Carolina, Brenton Lee Doyle was sentenced to 15 years for trying to fly a drone loaded with marijuana and tobacco into this maximum security prison. And this drone crashed in January, attempting to smuggle nearly seven pounds of crystal meth across the U.S.-Mexico border. I think law enforcement um, at large is concerned that drones will be used to deliver things that they shouldn't be delivering. They might be used by drug dealers. And even a concern would be that at some point people might use these to drop explosives or things like that. About 700,000 drones are expected to be sold this year, and it's predicted drone sales will reach 1 million by 2018. In July, the Department of Homeland Security warned law enforcement agencies around the country about the potential danger of drones in the hands of criminals. This is a no-brainer. We don't want unauthorized access to prisons by anyone under any means with any technology. And I think until it becomes a big enough issue, I think you're going to continue to see the problem. Well, technology to intercept drones, it's out there, but it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. And there are questions about how effective some of that technology is. So for now, police keeping their eyes peeled around prisons for this new problem. But it's not just prisons struggling to figure out the best way to intercept these unauthorized drones. Uh, it's also the federal government struggling as we speak. Yeah, no doubt. Secret Service, too. All right, Renee Mars, thank you so much. The number of drones flying in our skies has increased exponentially over the past few years. While there are many positive uses for these cheap and easy flying marvels, more and more drones are popping up in places where they're just not welcome. The question is how to solve the growing problem, which is now taking center stage in both boardrooms and backyards alike. Various systems are now being developed to stop intrusive drones. After all, just grabbing your shotgun and shooting one down isn't generally safe or legal. As an alternative, here are four ways to take down rogue drones. Take aim and take it down. Unwanted or illegal drones beware. It's the Battle Drone Defender from Battle Corporation, a leader in applied science research, innovation, and manufacturing. Looking like an exotic space rifle straight out of Flash Gordon or the Buck Rogers sci-fi films, this baby means business. When a rogue drone appears, the user can simply aim and fire a concentrated cone of energy that disrupts the drone's remote control signal and GPS reception, thus bringing down the drone. The Battle Drone Defender can defend up to 400 meters of airspace against any unauthorized aerial surveillance. It's lightweight, portable, and believed to be safe. This ingenious piece of electronics may soon become far more widely used. However, the public isn't invited. Until approved for public and regular law enforcement use, it's currently only authorized to be used by specific U.S. government agencies. For more information, just visit battle.org. With drones becoming increasingly more involved in close calls with aircraft, unauthorized flights over military installations, and unwanted surveillance, the need for anti-drone systems is absolute. One promising invention is the Skywall 100 Drone Defense System from English startup company OpenWorks Engineering. When a rogue drone shows up saying, uh, catch me if you can, Skywall, a 22-pound shoulder-mounted net cannon, can actually do just that. Skywall uses advanced computer-aided visual targeting system that can track and bring down the moving drone from up to 100 yards away. When the system locks on, Skywall fires a capsule containing a huge net and a parachute. 
Once the drone is captured in the net, the parachute brings the drone down safely and intact. In case of a miss or multiple drones, Skywalk can be reloaded and fired in as little as eight seconds. As of now, OpenWorks is yet to announce the price or release date of Skywall, but you can bet there will be plenty of interest. Find out more at OpenWorksEngineering.com. Another company developing drone net capture technology is Tice UAV Solutions with the Exippo anti-drone systems. Exippo doesn't need to wait for the drone to wander into range because it's a drone. Exippo is equipped with an onboard camera and can be guided to intercept, fire a net at the moving drone and disable its propellers. The net can be fired freely, causing the rogue drone to drop to the earth like a stone. Or the net can also remain tethered to the Exippo, allowing it to carry its opponent back back to base for examination. This one-sided high-tech game of tag definitely gives the home team advantage against some not-so-welcome visitors. Since the size of the net can be adjusted, development is also underway to adapt the Exippo for capture of manned aircraft, people, cars, even animals. Anyone thinking rodeo? In its current design, Exippo requires that the pilot fly manually, but Tice says they hope to create a version that can automatically chase and capture the target once it's seen by the pilot on the camera. For more information, visit TiceUAV.com. So far, we've seen some crazy yet effective innovations to combat the serious problems of rogue drones. In the Netherlands, however, police are investigating the possibility of using raptors to take down these intruders. No, we're not talking velociraptors like Jurassic Park, but we are talking about what many scientists believe are their descendants, predatory birds, specifically eagles. Leave it to the folks in the land of the Vikings to come up with such a talon-wielding solution. Police and raptor training company Guard From Above are teaming up to see if this can actually be done effectively. These birds of prey are absolutely beautiful when seen up close. But after one look at one of these majestic creatures snatching a drone from the sky, and you'll know it's not their good looks that makes them so successful in the wild. Raptor talons are extremely sharp and strong enough to crush bone. Though the bird's handlers say the eagle's tough legs and claws make it unlikely they'll be injured by the propellers, a trespassing drone may not be so safe. So if you're flying a drone in the Netherlands, in a place where ah, you shouldn't be, as they say in the airline industry, watch out for bird strikes. Usually we hear about drones in connection with warfare or military action, but there's a whole other side of drones that is changing the world for good, and that's important to talk about too. Though there are gradations in what qualifies as a drone, in their purest form, drones are unmanned aerial vehicles. They may be fully or partially autonomous, as large as a commercial airplane, or as small as a toy. And in recent years, the democratization of this drone technology has allowed civilians to access information and take action in new ways. On the lighter side, drones provide entertainment and allow us to capture beauty. Recently, I was at a wedding and drones were used to capture stunning landscapes and special moments. But they can also capture footage that serves to inform. Because they can be small and light, they can travel to dangerous or remote locations. For example, when a riot erupted in Warsaw, Poland a few years ago, the tear gas release made it nearly impossible for journalists or civilians to survey the conflict. But images of the riot still made their way to the public thanks to a civilian drone. And drones have been used to expose harm to the environment as well. For example, to detect poaching of elephants and rhinos or the decimation of public lands. These powerful images can help hold governments and other powerful entities accountable and galvanize social movements. And for a more immediate impact, we can look at how drones save lives. They have been used in rescue missions to find missing people, most recently in the aftermath of the Nepal earthquake. And companies are testing drones to deliver medical supplies to rural areas. Places like Sub-Saharan Africa or islands that may not have the proper infrastructure to transport medicine, blood, and other supplies via vehicles. This makes it very difficult to properly treat the ill. But drones can move quickly through the sky without much obstacle. Save for landing pads to recharge, the drones don't need much else. 
That's what's revolutionary about drones. In the same way some third world countries have skipped over copper wires and gone straight to the internet for communication. Because drones need less infrastructure and eat up fewer resources, drones can help third world countries leap beyond certain stages of development. In essence, they can allow less developed countries to catch up and to do it fast. What's more, drones have the power to democratize access to information, services, and goods, and in that way, propel the world forward. 